patient who has injured his leg seriously. I'm seeing the patient advises he's in a lot of pain. Well, we're really worried about avalanche. That's the number one thing in the backcountry. And we're worried about hypothermia. Were they prepared to spend the night? Uh, we have another rescue, so. I want to use all the snowmobiles if I can, but I have to have good teams. First time that uh, I've ever had three calls in 10 years I've been doing this, three calls in one day. Well, when it rains, it pours. Life in Jackson Hole, Wyoming is speeding up. It's a dash to take in everything the Tetons offer, and that fills Jackson with a constant adventurous buzz. It seems everyone is on their way out the door or just returning from another epic experience. The constant coming and going leaves locals feeling unmoored. They crave an anchoring base camp, somewhere in the shadow of these mountains where they can rest and reset just long enough to dream up another trip into the backcountry. As more locals look to put down roots, the town continues to spread out into the aspen and cottonwood groves. This is where search and rescue coordinator Jess King found her home just down slope of the Tetons. This is my house. Incredibly fortunate to be able to own a home in Jackson. It's really tough, as most people who've heard of Jackson Hole know. It's a really wealthy community, so it's challenging to make ends meet, but uh, my husband John and I have worked really hard to save money and buy a place. Jess is the only paid staffer on Search and Rescue. As the team coordinator, she's the human glue holding the operation together. You can see that we're in the middle of a ton of renovations. We have too much space, which I guess is a good problem to have, but so we just live in, this is where our master closet is, storage right now too, but because of getting call outs in the middle of the night, it's really nice that I can get out of bed, run in here and get changed for a rescue and not wake up Jana. All search and rescue members must have their gear well organized and ready to respond when a call comes in. Right now, with the inside of her home totally gutted, Jess isn't feeling as dialed as she'd like to be. I'm on call 24 seven for work. And so I'm kind of at work all the time, but I love my job, I love SAR. I started as a volunteer because I love it. Transitioned into this job. It can be challenging at times, to balance it, because I'll be in the middle of something, like working on a project with my husband, and we'll get a call out, and you gotta leave. The town of Jackson is a jumping off point for all kinds of adventures into the backcountry. Routine to downright risky. So it makes sense that this place maintains a community base camp, perched on a hill right in the center of town. And it's Jess's job to maintain this place. Home for her right now might be chaos, but the search and rescue hangar is always ship shape. I take care of this whole building. I make sure it's operational, that all of our gear is ready to go when we have a mission. I love everything to be in its place and to have lots of open space, be really clean. 
just like to make sure that they're ready to go. This isn't my gear, this is their gear to use and perform the missions and we couldn't do our job without all this gear. Jess doesn't know it, but this is the calm before the biggest storm of rescues ever to hit Jackson Hole. Deputy on a snowbill ride last night with another individual. We believe the Black Mountain, Bald Mountain, possibly Caribou Mountain area of Bonneville County did not make it out. The call for help comes in from neighboring Bonneville County, about 40 miles southwest of the search and rescue hangar. In an area known as Black Mountain, two snowmobilers disappeared the day before. Let's get the team gates, let's get rolling through the hangar. The local sheriff's department briefs the search and rescue team. Where are you guys right there? But basically we have two snowmobilers have been lost since about 2, well, stuck since probably about 2.30 yesterday. It is one of our deputies and one of his neighbors. So far, they've seen two tracks going into some pretty nasty terrain that if you're going to, you have to commit to going out the bottom. And we're going to do that last night because of the darkness, obviously. Okay. Flip, team leader, your group. Uh, Scroy, team leader, your group. Galen, team leader, your group. Okay, buddy, you guys grab a helmet if you don't got one. We assign hasty teams as we need to with leaders. We make sure everyone has the safety gear they need, and then we dispatch them into the field. Jess pulls together the best team members and tools needed to execute this rescue, while veteran volunteer Tim Seal Carlin steps up as incident commander, overseeing operations from the hangar. I want to be where the forks, the, the two okay. tracks go in. So that's Put where your I want teams to together. Yep. I want to use all the snowmobiles if I can, but I have to have good teams. Well, not only sending a helicopter to help look for the two lost snowmobilers, we also send ground teams, and we send a ground snowmobile team. And we do that as a backup plan, because we never know if we can make it there with a helicopter. But more importantly, we don't know if we make it back. If that aircraft goes down with our people on the board, we want to be there right now. So we have a ground team en route down to the staging area, and um, we'll put them to work if it, if it needs to be. Snowmobile and heli team now en route. We're really worried about avalanche. That's the number one thing in the backcountry, and we're worried about hypothermia. You know, Even if they didn't get an avalanche, um, were they prepared to spend the night, and did they stay warm? You always worry a little bit about somebody getting hurt and they're not being able to get out. And finally, you worry about, well, maybe they just have a, maybe they're just stuck. The team lays out its plan. They have no known coordinates for the missing snowmobilers. So they scour the area using spotters in the heli and expert sledders on the ground. Both are looking for one thing, tracks leading to the lost riders. Every minute counts. Area. There's a ton of vehicles here, you can't miss it. Jess relocates to the trailhead and coordinates the rescue. Searching by both land and air could cut time and mean the difference between life and death, especially if the lost riders were unable to start a fire and ward off hypothermia. What we have here is we had a couple snowmobilers spend the night out last night. Today, the Helicopter went in with some uh, from our team, the ground teams went in. Teton County Search and Rescue Heli Specialist John Weedy scouts from the chopper. Romeo Lima, be advised, thick fog layer at 9,000 feet. Uh, we don't really have good visibility. There's a fog layer down there. The snowmobilers could be seriously injured or hypothermic, and the heli team still doesn't know their exact location. Teton County rescuers lead a search by land and air. With heli specialist John Weedy scouting from the chopper, on the hunt for a pair of lost snowmobilers who overnighted in the backcountry. 
They found two tracks going into a really nasty spot. And I'll contact you directly with GPS coordinate and we'll just go from there. We'll send two snow machine teams in, one from Jack Mack, one from McCoy Creek, and have this helicopter search the track area. The snowmobilers could be injured or suffering from hypothermia. So John and the heli team are concerned to find thick fog hanging over the search area. Then the heli team spots members of the rescue party below. They've traced a set of tracks from the day before and now hope to pinpoint where the lost snowmobilers are stuck. We finally get in the drainage, one of the two drainages we think they might be in. The light has gotten good, the cloud layer has lifted as we're coming up canyon. We see some smoke up near the head of this canyon and uh, make our way that way. And that's when the heli team spots the lost riders. They are stuck in a steep canyon and appear to be struggling with one of the sleds. Hey, the ground crew. We have a visual. John studies the difficult terrain from above and prepares himself for what he'll find when the heli lands. Just kind of wondering uh, if we're going to be dealing with any injury or anything medical. You know, are these guys really in trouble or have they just spent the night? So obviously, there's always a bit of adrenaline going. When the 2,700-pound heli lands in soft, deep snow, it sinks. This shortens the distance between the spinning rotor overhead and the snow surface below. So to avoid the blades, crew members use a specialized exit maneuver. Some of us on the team call it the badger crawl, uh, just to get as far away from the rotors as we can. Happily, the rescuers come upon a best case scenario. The snowmobilers are uninjured and they've repaired their snowmobile enough to ride out, but they're unsure of which direction to go. We make contact uh, with the two lost snowmobilers and find out that they're, you know, they're healthy. Uh, they've just spent the night out, they had a big fire. One snowmobile isn't really operating that well and having spent the night and spent, I think a good portion of the evening trying to get out of there, they're wanting to kind of end, end their ordeal, I guess, without uh, too much strain. Back at Incident Command, word of the snowmobiler's condition is relayed to the team. You're good? We're able to locate the missing party. Luckily, they're all okay, just cold and tired. And right now, the helicopter is helping them navigate uh, the best route out back to the trailhead, because uh, the route they went in was pretty technical and challenging to get back out. So right now, we're waiting for everyone to come back to the trailhead. With the heli crew's help, the rescuers and lost snowmobilers find their way out. So Jess and the rest of the team head back to the hangar. Well, we just finished a rescue and we were just putting all the gear away and we just shut the doors, put the aircraft in and we were all standing around debriefing and lo and behold, we get another call. It's another snowmobiler in trouble. But this time, it's a 13-year-old boy with a serious leg injury. Let's get it going. After rescuing two lost snowmobilers, the Teton County Search and Rescue volunteer team looks forward to winding down at the hangar. But then, another call comes in. This time, it's a 13-year-old snowmobiler with a broken femur up on Togety Pass. You call in. Let me get everybody rounded up. Uh, we have another rescue, so. So once again, the community is relying on Jess's team to swoop into the backcountry by land and air. Leading the snowmobile crew is expert rider Flip Tucker. 24-7, uh, we're always on call. We don't get days off. That's why we have, uh, we have 40 members to take care of that. We have so many people here. We've got enough here. Okay. Today, Flip's job is to provide backup support for the heli. And if he's lucky, he'll get to ride to the scene of the rescue. Okay, Trail, um, Alex, grab a map of the, of the Togety area. That's always been a thing. So we always try to be in contact with the patient. Um, and it's hard to do sometimes when you got the choppers.
Flip's ground team arrives at the trailhead just as the heli spots the injured rider from the air. Back at the hangar, Jess monitors all communications and learns the situation is growing increasingly urgent. The patient advises he's in a lot of pain. Guides from nearby Togedi Mountain Lodge are on scene and have the boy stabilized, but they still need help moving him. The boy is surrounded by friends and family. Rescuers on scene organize the group so they can carry him smoothly over the snow. This is important because with a broken femur, the jagged end of the bone can nick an artery if jostled and cause serious internal bleeding. Time is running short. They need to get the boy out of the backcountry and into the ambulance waiting back at the highway. When the chopper picks up and is headed towards the ambulance, I feel a huge sense of relief. I mean, I don't feel like the job is done until the helicopter is back here at the hangar and my team is back here safely. Then, shortly after wrapping up this incident, another emergency call comes in. Okay. Three in one day, a new record. Three in one day, huh? I need to Hi. figure out who I've got. Backcountry Zero. A campaign to reduce fatalities in the backcountry. It's time to heighten our awareness about safety. It's time for zero. The exhaustion of two rescues in one day is starting to set in. Everyone is looking forward to the end of this day. But there will be no rest for the weary just yet. Because now, a record-setting third call is coming into search and rescue. You, Anthony, and Flip, is that all I have left? A backcountry skier with a blown knee is stranded at a yurt perched along the remote commissary ridge. Here's Targhee. Okay, gotcha. Okay, this is Commissary Ridge across the way. This kind of injury should require a simple patient evacuation, but the way this day is going, the team is prepared to stay the night in the backcountry if necessary. When we get call outs like that, it's not sometimes. Uh, we can go three weeks without something, and then bang, 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 we'll have three, three in a row. First time that uh, I've ever had three calls in 10 years I've been doing this, three calls in one day. That's why I'm trying to get my team ready to go. <laughs> For the third time today, Flip races out. We've officially requested so we'll be able to end the helicopter, correct? The crew will make short work of this rescue if they can find a clear place to land. Without a good landing zone, this could turn into an ordeal. So with other teammates exhausted from the marathon string of calls, Tim hops aboard the heli to lead field operations. Yeah, if you guys get there first, that would be great. We have a, a woman that is um, has a pretty serious knee injury on the other side of the county again, in completely opposite direction. The snow is six feet deep on top of Commissary Ridge. Lucky for the team, friends of the injured skier stomp out a landing zone. That way the heli won't get bogged down in the snow. Can I get a helicopter to come into the LV? As Tim approaches the patient, he sees that it's a familiar face. Turns out I know these folks. Yep, you're screwing <laughs> off instead of working, huh? <laughs> That's what we get. It's a Monday. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> They're staying at a backcountry yurt and skiing up there, and um, snow conditions are pretty bad. You blew up a knee or a leg on, during one of the runs during the day. I'm great. I'm great. Yeah, I'm great. Can we get now? Yeah. 
Once the leg is protected, Tim brings the skier to the heli. It's just to the fireman carry. All the folks are back, and they're back with their loved ones, alive and well. But it's just a good day for all of us. We're really, really proud to help our community. I love working at the hangar by myself and getting things organized and fixing gear, but it's way more fun when the whole team is here and we're actually doing what we train for. I mean, that's just awesome. It doesn't get better than that.